Welcome to the Jewelry Resellers Podcast, your go-to source for all things shiny, sparkly, and of course, profitable. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'll be your guide on this dazzling journey through the world of reselling jewelry. We'll be diving deep into the art and science of reselling, uncovering valuable tips, insider secrets, and sharing stories from successful jewelry resellers. We'll explore market trends, industry news, and even discuss how to find those hidden gems just waiting to be discovered in thrift stores, estate sales, and beyond. So if you're dreaming of turning your hobby into a hustle, or if you're a seasoned pro looking to stay at the top of your jewelry reselling game, join me each week for insights, stories, and more on the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. I'm your host, Desiree, and today we're going to be talking about Mercari. Now, as a jewelry reseller, we want to be informed of as many options as possible for us to get our jewelry sold, right? Because that's what that's what we're doing this for. We're trying to make money, and we are trying to do it in a way that really works with our lifestyles, our systems, maybe our preferences, whatever. And so I've had a few people ask me about the online selling platform Mercari. So we're going to talk about that today. All right. So before we get started, I always like to remind you about joining our weekly newsletter, because when you do that, I will then send you a list. And I think this is a list that's going to be very helpful. This is a list of the 20 best-selling vintage jewelry brands that all resellers should know. So if you are getting started as a jewelry reseller, specifically if you're selling vintage jewelry, this is a list that you want to be familiar with. You want to know exactly what you're looking for if you are looking for pieces to resell. Okay, so you can get that list at our website, which is jewelryresellerspodcast.com. Again, that is jewelryresellerspodcast.com. And of course, I will have a link in the description and the show notes for you. Okay, so let's get into talking about selling jewelry on Mercari. Now, a lot of people don't talk about Mercari, and I'm wondering if it's because it's not as popular as some of the other online marketplaces or if it's because maybe people just don't have a very high opinion of the platform Mercari. Now I have sold on Mercari off and on for years. I've sold a little bit of jewelry on there, but not nearly as much as I've sold on eBay and Poshmark. And I tried to really think to myself, why is that? Why, why am I not utilizing Mercari more. And I guess it for me, it goes back to the experiences I've had on Mercari. And they haven't necessarily been horrible, but they haven't been stellar either. And so my opinion of, of Mercari in general is just very neutral. The other thing about Mercari is it does have a lot less traffic than the other platforms. So I think that's probably why it's not a first choice for a lot of resellers, but a lot of resellers will use Mercari if they are cross-listing their items just to increase the amount of exposure that their items, or in this case, their jewelry will get, you know, the higher chance of making a sale. So I did take some notes and I did do a little bit of research like I always do. And we're going to talk about the pros and cons of the platform Macari in case you are considering selling jewelry there. Now, I know some people who are jewelry sellers have have told me that they actually prefer the smaller platforms because they feel like they're not as saturated in specific categories. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. I have not seen any type of data to confirm or deny that type of a statement, but this is just what I've heard other resellers say. All right, so I guess it's just something to keep in mind. So selling jewelry on Macari, again, it's a popular online marketplace. 
It does offer a straightforward way for individuals to reach a broad audience with their items. However, like any platform, there are both advantages and disadvantages to consider. So let's break down the pros and cons of selling jewelry on Mercari. All right, so I'm going to talk about the pros first. Number one, I think it's already been mentioned, and that's a broad audience. Mercari provides access to a wide range of buyers looking for various types of jewelry, from costume pieces to more expensive, even some fine jewelry. Now, I have actually bought more jewelry on Mercari than I have sold on Mercari. And that is because sometimes you can find some really good jewelry lots listed on Macari. So if you are someone who likes to buy big bulk, bulk lots of jewelry, Macari could be a place that you could, you can consider. Now, of course, you're going to have to do some research. You're going to have to really know and be knowledgeable about jewelry and the type of jewelry that you're looking for. But it can be a good place to find some deals. I found some I found some morning jewelry, which is, you know, the black the black jewelry, the vintage morning jewelry, and I found a lot of it on Macari for a really good price. And I don't know if the person actually knew that that's what it was because it didn't say anything like that in the listing, but I could tell by looking at the photographs that that's what it was. So, I was able to find a really good deal in that particular case. Now, the other thing about Mercari, too, is that you can make offers the same way you can on Poshmark or eBay. So it gives you a little bit of, uh, I guess, negotiating room to really get the best price that's going to work for you. Okay, so you will have a broad audience if you do list your items on Mercari. I know I was just talking about buying, but talking about this just reminded me of that. All right, the pro number two as it relates to Macari is that it is very user friendly. There's not as many options, not as many bells and whistles as you're going to see on eBay. And for some people, that's really good. Some people don't want to deal with all the item specifics and all of the things that you have to deal with as it relates to being a seller on eBay. All right, so the Macari platform is designed to be simple and intuitive, making it easy for sellers to list their items. It also makes it easy for you to figure out a price and to communicate with potential buyers. Okay, and so this is just something to keep in mind. This is just things to think about if you're, if you're considering selling on Macari. All right, now I think this next pro is probably going to be the one that most people are happy about and maybe why a lot of people do sell on Macari and continue to sell on Macari and that is because they have no listing fees. All right, Macari does not charge upfront fees for listing items, which means you can post multiple 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 items, listings without incurring additional costs. So there's just a flat fee of 10% of the final sale price when you make the sale. But Mercari is not going to charge you to list the item and they're not going to charge you for, I don't know if they have, you know, I probably should look into that because now I'm, I'm wondering if you can pay to promote on Mercari because I forgot to check that. But anyway, I will check that out and <laughs> then I will let you know. All right, but this is good. You don't have to pay any upfront fees. And I think that's that's awesome, especially if, if you don't have, you know, if you don't have any money, if you don't have a budget or anything, uh, that's really, really good. If you just want to throw something up there and hope hope it sells and then you pay once once it does. All right, number four is seller protection. Macari offers protection for sellers against fraudulent claims and chargebacks. Uh, pro provided you follow their shipping and transaction guidelines. Okay, so this is really, really good. Now, I have heard people say that they think Mercari is an easier platform for sellers to get scammed. I didn't find that to be true from my experience. But then again, you know, everybody will have a different opinion about this. But I didn't have any problems with that 
what I sold on Macari. I never had had an issue with that. All right, so number five is the flexible shipping options. Sellers who can choose, or sellers can choose who pays for shipping, and that's either the buyer or seller, and select from multiple shipping carriers offered by Macari. And usually those are at discounted rates. So the shipping is pretty easy on Macari, you know, compared to some of the other platforms. Uh, I never had an issue with that. I always thought that the, the shipping costs were pretty fair and pretty reasonable. And, you know, they were in line with other platforms. So I think buyers, you know, they were fine. They didn't have any issue. I never got any complaints about someone saying I overcharged them for the shipping. So I do think the shipping is really easy to deal with on Macari. All right, so those are the five pros that I was able to come up with as it relates to selling on Macari, especially if you're trying to sell your jewelry on Macari. All right, so let's get into these cons. All right, number one is the transaction fees, and I already talked about this earlier. Macari charges a flat 10% selling fee on the final sale price, uh, including the shipping cost set by the seller. You know, so this can kind of eat into your profits a little bit, especially if you're selling higher price jewelry. So basically it's 10% of whatever the total cost is of the item. And that does include shipping. So it's pretty much like how eBay does it. eBay takes a percentage of the total, the total amount of the sale, not tax, of course, but you know, the shipping is included on that, but it's a flat 10%, which I think is good because you don't have a sliding scale actually, you know, like on some of the other platforms, like depending on what category it is, the selling fees are different. Okay, uh, number two as a con for Macari, I put down competition. And I put competition because depending on what category you're selling, but of course we're talking about jewelry, you know, the marketplace can be saturated with certain types of jewelry listings, making it challenging for your items to really stand out and be seen without competitive pricing or unique offerings. So you really have to figure out how you're going to make your listings get seen. Like I said, I don't know if Mercari offers promoted listings. You know what? While I am recording this, I am going to look it up because I think that is key for the sake of the discussion that we are, that we are having. Okay. So yes, Macari does have a promote button. Okay. That's, that's fantastic. <laughs> you know, here on the Macari website, it says, want to bring attention to your listing Give promote or offer to likers a try. You can either promote your item to everyone or make an, ex an exclusive offer to likers only. Okay, so you can adjust the price by either promoting it. It looks like you can adjust the price and, well, you know, I'm not sure. And I don't want to, oh, well, it looks like you can reduce the price and you can send that out to people who have liked your item. Oh, and you can promote up to 10 items per 24 hours. Okay, so there is a way to promote, but it doesn't look like it is an additional fee per se. It's just kind of like price dropping. All right, and I may not even be 100% accurate on this, but I will have a link to the Macari page that talks about promotions and you can take a look at it in case you really are serious about selling your jewelry on Macari, then at least you'll have the most current information <laughs> and not have to rely on me trying to figure it out as I record this episode. But okay, let's get back to our list. Okay, so we talked about the competition. So, you know, it doesn't really matter what platform you're on as I've, through my own experience, it seems like selling jewelry, no matter where you're going to sell it, there's a ton of other people selling jewelry too. But again, that shouldn't discourage you. And that doesn't mean you can't make the money and you can't make the sales. Okay. This is where you're just going to have to be really, really knowledgeable. Like we talk about over and over again, or you're going to have to just do something to really make yourself stand out. 
depending on what platform and how you're selling it and all those things. Okay, so let's talk about con number three as it relates to selling jewelry on Mercari. And that's a limited customer base for high-end jewelry. And I I really, you know, I thought about this and I, I do see this as being pretty much true. Now, while Mercari does have a broad audience, the platform is more known for casual transactions rather than high-end or luxury items. Now, that's not to say you can't sell high-end items on there but most people don't go to Macari specifically looking for high-end items. All right, so this is gonna limit your pool of potential buyers, especially if you're trying to sell more expensive jewelry. Okay, number four, we have risk of scams. I don't think this is unique only to Macari. You know, I think there's a risk of getting scammed no matter where you sell whether it be eBay, whether it be Poshmark, Mercari, Etsy, you know, if somebody wants to scam, they will, you know, the platform won't matter if that's what they're determined to do. But as with any online marketplace, there is a risk of encountering scams from buyers, such as false claims about not receiving an item or the item not being described or the item being damaged. So this is something you're going to have to deal with no matter where you sell but I did want to include it in the list so that way we we are just aware that that happens. All right, number five, as it relates to the cons of selling jewelry on Macari, and that's feedback and ratings and the impact. Your visibility and success on the platform can be significant, significantly affected by your ratings and feedback from buyers. Negative feedback, even if unwarranted, can deter potential customers. Now, just like on eBay, feedback on Macari is public, so you can go and check someone's feedback history. And even though this can impact people from whether or not they want to buy from you, I don't think that it's something that could totally make or break a deal. If you had something that someone really wanted to buy, and let's say you had one feedback, maybe even two, maybe even three, if someone really wants that item, I know a lot of buyers will will just take the chance and buy it because it may be something so rare, maybe something they've been looking for for a while, whatever the case may be. But again, sometimes this can be a problem if you have a lot of negative feedback, especially if you know, if it's not your fault, but I think that for the most part, most of us who are selling jewelry, you know, we, we try our best and we go above and beyond to make sure that we give a really good customer, you know, customer buying experience. Now, the last con I want to talk about as it relates to selling on Macari and that is, in my experience, you know, experience the lack of really good customer service. Now, I haven't had any major issues on Mercari, but I have had issues where I needed to talk to someone or I had a question about something. And it wasn't easy to get someone like a live person. I think you I think they do all of their customer service through the messaging, the messaging that they have. And so that can be a little frustrating, especially if you need to talk to someone right then and there or you're having a very serious or urgent problem. So that's something to keep in mind too. But again, I, I think when it comes to Macari, I don't know if I would make it my, my main platform for selling jewelry. But I see it as a really good platform for selling things like craft lots or bulk lots or things like that, that you want to liquidate quickly and you're not really asking really high prices and maybe you just kind of want to offload a bunch of stuff. That's where I see Macari being a really good place. And this is just my opinion. You know, maybe somebody out there, they love Macari and that's where they sell all their jewelry and they've had such a great experience with it. But just over the years, I, I, really, I really don't see Macari being like a main platform for selling jewelry. I see it as a secondary, third, even fourth option after you've 
already listed on all the other ones. But again, this is just my opinion, okay? And that's why we're having this discussion today so you can form an opinion and figure out what will work for you. Not everybody is selling the same type of jewelry. Not all of us have the same types of customers that we're trying to serve and find inventory for. So it just depends. It just depends on you, your goals, what what type of results you're trying to achieve in your business, and then being clear about how you're going to do that and what platforms you're going to use in order to make that happen. Okay, so that's what this is all about. All right, but let's talk about some strategies for success. All right, because no matter what platform you are selling on, you want to make sure that you are operating at the best the best potential or the best of your ability to be successful. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're doing the best that you can, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. So we want to have high quality listings. I don't think this is any surprise. Again, no matter what platform you sell on, you want to have strong, strong detailed descriptions and high quality photos. I find that a lot of the listings on Macari are very poorly done. The photos are not that great. So if you have really good photos and really good detailed descriptions right there, your listing is definitely going to stand out because a lot of times you just don't see that. You just don't see very good very good, strong, keyword rich listings on Macari. And that's another thing too. Uh, if you're looking to buy on Macari, that could work out to your advantage because sometimes people don't know what they have. And so they may not have a strong description and you may be able to go in there and find something at a, at a steal of a deal. All right, you also wanna offer competitive pricing. I think we talked about that a little bit as well. You don't want to overcharge, but you don't want to undercharge either. So research similar items on Macari to price your jewelry competitively. All right, next up, we want clear communication, respond promptly and professionally to buyer questions and after sale feedback. You know, again, I think all of us as jewelry resellers, we want to have or we want our buyers to have a good experience. So I don't think any of us would purposely ignore somebody, you know, a buyer or a potential customer, at least not in, intentionally. You know, if something happens, of course, maybe you don't get back to someone right away. But I really don't see us doing that. So, you know, but again, this is something that we want to remember. All right, the next strategy is all about packaging. I really love packaging and I probably will do an entire episode on packaging jewelry for reselling because it is one of my favorite parts of it. <laughs> you know, I really enjoy uh, wrapping things and I, I like making them pretty. Now I don't go overboard, but uh, just, you know, packaging the jewelry very securely to prevent damage and, and to create a positive unboxing experience for the buyer is really important. You know, you'll be surprised at people who will comment on your packaging or people who will appreciate that you put a little bit of extra bubble wrap or you used a box or whatever the case may be. All right, so just make sure that you, you put a little care and effort into your shipping and your packaging supplies. Okay, so I did write down promotions. Okay, so as I was looking earlier, I didn't scroll all the way down to the bottom of my notes, but another strategy for success is promotions. And it says, take advantage of Macari's promotional tools, such as promoting or relisting items to increase the visibility. All right, so I did talk about the promotions a little bit earlier when I was trying to figure out if Macari even offered promotions. Obviously they do. They work a little bit differently than on other platforms. So make sure that you read and read again and double check and make sure that you understand how the promotions work so you're not you know paying for something that you don't want or paying for something that you're not using uh, again i've never used promotions on macari so i don't have any experience with it but uh, it's another way to get your listing seen you know to increase the visibility which increases the potential of making a sale so those are some things you want to keep in mind if you are selling your jewelry on Mercari. 
All right, so selling on Macari can be a lucrative avenue for jewelry resellers who learn how to navigate the platform wisely, understanding both its potential and limitations. By focusing on quality jewelry, competitive pricing, and excellent customer service, resellers can successfully leverage Macari to reach a wide audience and grow their jewelry reselling business. So I want to know, what do you think about selling on Macari? Is this something that you will consider? Is this something that you will do? Because like I said, I've done it to kind of liquidate some things, although I don't know if I could make Macari my main squeeze. (laughs) At least not now. At least not now. So, but I do want to get your feedback and your opinion. Are you selling jewelry on Macari right now? Have you sold jewelry on Macari in the past? What do you think about it? What's your opinion? Like I said, I've heard, I've heard opinions all over the board. So it'll be interesting to see what you guys think. All right. And then again, before we close out, I want to remind you to join our weekly newsletter Just head on over to JewelryResellersPodcast.com. That's JewelryResellersPodcast.com. All right. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions or if you have an idea for a future episode topic, please reach out. You can also find my contact information on the website as well. All right. Thank you so much. I will check in with you again really soon. 